I'm representing King Stell, and the problem we were working on is a lack of screening for congenital heart disease. Around 60,000 children are born with it every year, half of which go undiagnosed at birth, which leads to a significant mortality per annum. And the room, there's a lot of room for improvement in the diagnostic process, which is basically a physician manually auscultating a typical patient for murmurs with a low sensitivity device which could either lead to undiagnosed patients or false positives, which when checked by an experienced cardiologist will waste time to spend on more serious patients. So the solution is an adjustable, reusable phonocardiogram belt. This is what it looks like on the front, and on the back you can see four diaphragms arranged in the shape of our heart walls. The, it's been sculpted to a neonase test, which is small enough that normal diaphragms can't appreciate it very accurately. And uh, the process is such that the belt is applied onto the patient, which with its engineered diaphragms will generate four audio feeds picked up by the um, app UI, which when we ask for an analysis, will channel the waveforms through a machine learning algorithm, which will compare it with already existing waveforms in the database to give you a diagnosis. What it looks like to the operator is such that if we will receive four audio uh, waveforms, which you can replay manually, they can analyze it to see which one is most problematic and then get details about the diagnosis that they want. So uh, the production uh, process is four-parted. Uh, engineering will be handled by in-house research and development teams. Uh, the body, Velcro, fabric, etc., will be handled by local textile companies. Software will be given to contracted programmers because the interface already exists in speech recognition systems and smartphones. It's not something that new. And cloud support, broadband companies uh, will, of course, be used for our investments um, because they're usually very happy to get it across in terms of their marketing. So um, hospitals, which are stable establishments, will provide a dual role because um, they continuously reinvest in terms of maintenance, the replenishment of devices, and uh, other further uh, developments that they might want. Otherwise, you could just uh, target consumers like remote health workers, NGOs, and primary, primary care physicians who can buy the device once or pay for it in terms of installments. So our competition is, of course, with uh, these things and um, digital stethoscopes, which are very expensive, heavy, large, require expertise to place and cannot be left on the child, and the process of application causes significant distress to the child. Our alternative is cheaper, lighter, smaller, easier to use, it gives diagnosis, which eliminates the part about expertise, is child-friendly, and no manipulation is really required. It can be used best in terms of first um, encounters with children, like on birth or first-time screening, so these uh, um, doctors could benefit the most from it. Its health impact is sizable because it prevents a large burden of disease. It's very well integrated into the process. Comparable, reusable, lives are saved. I mean, think of what a lady health worker could accomplish if given one of these in terms of screening and early prevention. And there's a huge value for money in terms of the sheer scalability of the project, where you form a database which could be reused by cardiac researchers intensively. You can integrate the hardware with other diagnostic modalities, and eventually, with a sophisticated enough machine learning algorithm, you could even replace echocardiograms for accurate diagnosis. Thank you. How did you arrive at the $50 cost of this? Um, we asked one of the mentors who is a biomedical, um, biotechnology, biotech expert. Uh, he's an IT person, basically. And he told us that the microphones, the uh, chip interface for Bluetooth, and um, just the general cost of fabric, plus additional costs for imported products, would amount to $80. And that, of course, takes care of the software aspect of it, which will, uh, the software will be, will be up for free. But of course, it can't work without the device. So the cost for that will be uh, taken back by people buying the product itself. Do you see any regulatory hurdles in this process? Um, such as? Such as requiring FDA or some kind of approval before you can even use it? Um, not necessarily. I mean, we consider at most they might have um, issues about like us accidentally recording conversations. <laughs> <laughs> And plus, this is, a, this is in a way a process innovation. So uh, this data that we're getting will obviously be given back to the algorithm, increasing its sensitivity, hopefully reaching to 100%. So in fact, they should be happy about it, because when it's put together with pulse oximetry or ECG, it will have a very high sensitivity. And it will take away the need for an echo. Have you thought about the discomfort to the child wearing something like this? And could you make it a little more fun with some stickers of color on it? Yeah. Well, yes, but um, if a child is newly born, they wouldn't really carry their way. <laughs> um, are you aware that more than 50% of the 
time, children would be crying when doctors examined them. That's what we started out with. We thought that a crying child would resist um, attempts by um, cardiologists to measure it with manually. So um, using this, you uh, you could just hand the child back to the mother, and uh, they would be hopefully more calm. It would still be recording. It would still be recording. It would confuse your. Use my sensitivity.